So it's the end of July and we're about to head out for a one week uh, trip for leaving from Cedar Lake. And I've been wanting to do this one for a while. We're gonna head down the, the Crow River into La Valle, make a loop, coming back, go by a Hogan catfish, that sort of thing. Anyway, uh, it's a really late start. It's 3.45 and we got a long paddle ahead of us. And scaries are getting a little dark, so we're gonna take off. So we only paddled for about 20-25 minutes and we had to turn the boat and go with the waves and uh, basically just let them take us to shore. We went to this little beach site, we're not really not far from the, the Brent access point. Uh, there's a campsite right on this little hill but there's somebody already on it. Uh, but we're going to have to wait it out, it's just a, this boat is uh, it's an old ultralight Kevlar boat and it has a lot of flex to it. So when the waves start going uh, 45 degrees or sideways to you. It gets, a, it gets a little nerve-wracking and we already had waves going within an inch of coming over, so we just wanted to play it safe, pull over, gonna wait it out, and uh, we'll see how far we go today. So it never did clear up on cedar, and uh, we're hunkered down underneath the bug tent. Um, luckily for us, there, like I said, there's people on this campsite. They didn't mind us uh, setting up over here. And they even invited us up. Uh, they had a campfire before the rain started. And they even fed us. So they were really nice to them. Unfortunately, I'm horrible with names. Uh, very lovely couple. They're originally from Ontario. They live in Montreal now. And uh, as them and their two daughters, very, very nice. But uh, as you can see, we're stuck basically about half an hour from the truck. And uh, we're gonna probably go to bed early here and uh, wake up as early as we can tomorrow. So it's about it's a little after six in the morning on day two. Just uh, finished off a of breakfast and twig stove here. Uh, it was a pretty nice night last night. It was raining most of the night, pretty windy. Made for a nice sleeping though. And, uh, so the sun's just starting to come up outside. And uh, we just finished up breakfast, so we're going to pack up and basically get as much done as we can today. So we're out on the water, finally finishing our little cedar crossing. It's probably about 7 in the morning, something like that. And so far, so good. Like we're coming up to our first port hours of the trip so we're finally done with cedar lake it was a nice easy paddle this morning it's almost like putting them that high is stupid First fish of the trip. Uh, we just uh, finished that 960 portage off of Cedar. I'm fishing the rapids right after it. Have it. Things have been jumping like a bass, but I don't think it's a bass. Mm. Oh, it is a bass. <laughs> yeah, I was not expecting a bass here. So, Mr. 
arriving at the second portage, going down to Petawawa towards Iridia. It's uh, 680 or something like that. to the third portage going down to Petawawa. This is the last portage before we get to Radiant. Probably gonna have a little snack before we do this portage. boxes are packed away so we're sort of stuck with what we have on right now. So we're still going along the shore looking for our turn in from Radiant uh, down towards Plover. But uh, following this shore we ran out of water so we're just walking on this beautiful beach until we get to the deeper water over here. It looks like our turn in's coming up right up. But it gives us a reason to stretch the legs. Beautiful day but the wind is definitely kicking up. We caught, we crossed Radiant just at the right time. Like now you can see white caps and uh, yeah, very, very glad that we got across it when we did. So we're at the 230 meter portage, uh, just uh, staying on the Petawawa River. Guess we could have just put it in here and start, start the portage. So we're coming up on our left to the turn. We, where we basically should have camped last night, Clover Lake. Um, it's about one in the afternoon now, so we want to camp. By five o'clock, we'd like to be on a campsite. So we're gonna travel for, see how far we get to get. We're obviously not getting all the way back on track today, but uh, we'll go as far as we can in the next four hours while taking breaks and fishing every now and then, and uh, find a campsite. Coming up to another portage, going around some rapids on the Petawawa. Uh, it's about a six or seven hundred meter portage. DJ Kali. <laughs> 
So we just did a little 70 meter portage on the Petawawa. Decided to throw the lure in like literally as soon as we got out of the portage. And I had right up against the boat three bass fighting over who, who was gonna bite it. And this little guy got there first. Barely hooked to. Jeez. <laughs> Smallest little bass the trip. Oh, good, you got off. <laughs> that was bigger than any of the ones I've caught. I think that was the one chasing you. <laughs> Still on it? Yep. Another one's there. Oh, but no, but he's not hooked. Okay. Alright, Mike's got his first bass here. Well, he's had several, but uh, they keep uh, getting off. <laughs> yeah, for such small little bass, they're, well, I mean, small enough, they're always, always give good, decent fights. Probably want to open your bale so that uh, so it doesn't fling once, once you get them out. Sure, there's a fish on there? Yeah, but wait, it's gonna take off. <laughs> you sure? It's there. I'm telling so you. So far, it looks like you got a bunch of weeds to me. Whoa! There was a fish on it. <laughs> stay on the last campsite on Francis or we'll do a 200 meter and we'll stay on the, there's two campsites on the next lake um, we've done enough for today we want to have a little bit of camp life maybe go swimming and we've been at it since 7 30 in the morning so but uh, actually tons of bass and like the every everywhere we fished on the Petawawa so far like unlimited smallmouth bass So as expected, we took the last campsite on uh, Traverse Lake, little sandy beach. Look forward to going out to swim. Campsite's uh, a little dark, but it uh, opens up nicely. So this is the spot for day two. So Mike had to start a fire. Last year, me and Mike came in the August trip, and uh, it was the, there was all the forest fires, so there was a fire ban in Algonquin. So we were here for like six days or whatever it was, and we couldn't start a single fire. So got to boiling up some water to rehydrate our meals. Got the bug shelter up in case later there's any rain or if the bugs get out of hand. Right now there's so much wind, that's fine. Uh, we got a nice little beach down there. We both went for a swim, freshen up, got all our stuff blowing in the breeze. Hammocks set up back here.
we have squirrel. So it's morning of day three. It's already pretty warm. No wind at all. I'm just finishing packing up. Uh, did a little fishing after supper last night. Caught some more bass. Um, that's about it. We left the both fishing rods uh, hung up on rocks. So I just went and got them unstuck this morning. And uh, Mike's just closing up his bag. And then we'll take off. We've got another long day today. So we just finished our first portage, 200 meters into Killdeer, some little rapids here, and uh, throwing a few lines, first fall fish of the trip. Yeah, looks like these rapids are the fall fish rapids. Oop. Okay. Oh, Mike got himself a little smallmouth. We doubled up. Mike got a fall fish. I got another small muff. <laughs> Biggest fall fish of the day so far. Yeah, it's blind. That's a bass. Holy shit. Nope, nope, that's not a bass. It's a trout. I'm not sure. Oh, it's a walleye. <laughs> well, I finally got to see one. Damn. So, unfortunately, it's like, I don't know, eight or nine in the morning, but got a really nice either size walleye here. So we had to force ourselves to stop fishing that rapid. It was really good fishing. Smallmouth, fall fish, and uh, that one good size uh, walleye. So now we're on a 155 meter, leaving Kildeer, going to the, back to the Petawawa River. So we just turned onto the Pearl River. Uh, got a little paddle, and then our first portage is uh, 155 around Blueberry Falls. So hopefully fish like blueberries. Catch some on the other side. Portage signs. I think it's supposed to be on the right hand side. Don't see it yet. You want to cast a few lines or? Yeah. That's first cast at the Blueberry Falls. Pulled up a little bass. Busy retying my line here. Mike's just busy emptying this, these balls of fish. 
with her little bass. He pulled like a much bigger fish than that. Well, we definitely should have continued, but let's just uh, go around it. We just had our lunch break at the end of this 500 meter portage. Got a little paddle now, and uh, now the, the big portages on the Crow River start. Oh, it looks like I have dragonflies on my paddle here. Um, so yeah, we got a little paddling, and then a couple big portages, and we'll see how we feel and see where we stop. So we're about to start the 2400, but uh, looking closer at the map, it looks like it's 2400 to White Partridge, but if we're continuing down the Crow River, the portage continues for another 13, so we're probably doing a 3,700 meter portage right now. So we're just taking a break at the end of the 2400 meter and uh, 
Unfortunately, the 1200 meter after doesn't just link with this one, but it's about as close as you can get. It's right there. Uh, probably either we're just gonna put the bags in the canoe and pull them along, or we'll actually throw them on our backs and carry them carefully over these rocks. Go closer to the edge, man, where the falls are. Looks like there's less water. So even though we're both pretty much wiped, uh, the three campsites on Levac are really, really crappy. Um, so we're just going to continue on. It's four more portages to the next lake with campsites. Um, there's only one that's like 600 meters, the first one. And but from the looks of it, it's pretty much straight uphill. Uh, but we're just going to do it, um, build up on water again and keep moving. finally set up on our campsite uh, we made it to Malik Lake um, it uh, of course had to give us one last little obstacle um, the first two there's three campsites on Malik Lake the first two didn't look usable for us so we went for the third and that's when the sky opened up and crazy wind and rained a little bit not too much so we rushed to set up our camp Mike Got a fire started, he's the fireman. And we got everything else set up. It's about uh, 5.30 now, so we're gonna probably start supper, maybe go for a swim, because uh, as Mike just said, he feels disgusting, and I uh, kind of feel disgusting myself. But uh, th this campsite was definitely the best that we saw of the six that we had available to us near the end of our day. We're still not caught up from uh, the day one cedar uh, storm that made us basically get no traveling done. But um, we're pretty close now. Um, by tomorrow we'll be on the campsite we're supposed to be on. This is our campsite. Look at that shit. It was a crazy ass storm last night. hammock. Let's see if we can go find G on the shitter. Let's see if he wants to say hello in a couple words or something. Gonna invade your privacy on camera. <laughs> I said I'm gonna invade your privacy on camera. 
Whoa! That's pretty much it. Nothing special going on here. But it sure is pretty. So it's the morning of day four. Um, we're expecting today to finally catch up to where we're supposed to be camped. Uh, last night, uh, we had a really nice night. Uh, the fire kept most of the bugs away. But uh, right before we were gonna go to bed, crazy thunder and lightning storm just you know, insane wind popped up we both ran to our hammocks and the wind was just pounding the tarp against the hammock for about an hour it was, uh, it was actually pretty cool but uh, all is well we're about to put off got a beaver swimming next to us here Looks pretty small. I don't know if that was a beer. Just doing a 165 on the Crow River. Thought we might have skipped a four times. We ended up having to wade through uh, a good chunk of the river, but uh, no, nope, we're still on track. It's just the water's low, I guess. So we're done with that section of the Crow River. And now we're crossing Lake Lavalle. There's a bit of a breeze, some small, some small chop, but we're going head into it, so it's not too bad. Bill Swift Sr.'s favorite lake in the park. Like a bathroom guy or a couch guy? Or Don't know what that means. So we just finished crossing Lake Lavalle. And now we're in, on a campsite in Crow Bay. We're just going to stop here and have lunch. Uh, change the map because we're going into a different section. And then we'll get back on the water. So we just finished this little marsh section and uh, pretty much for the rest of the day we're going to be on the Crow River again. A series of little portages right now, a little 110. Right. right. It happens. Yeah. Usually that's a black fly. They crawl up till they find skin, then they bite. Third four thousand in a row. We've got one more after this. 385 and then we're paddling the Crow River. Looks like it's gonna be really windy. Probably for a couple hours before the next portage.
just push over it. It just come wider. Just averted. Now, oh, don't tell me you hooked yourself. <laughs> so we just got to the 1,200 meter portage on the Crow River. So this is the third last that we have to do before we get to Big Crow, which is where we're staying tonight. So it's taking a water break before we start this 1,200. And uh, right at the beginning of the portage here, there's this old abandoned canoe but uh, this portage I mean the beginning doesn't necessarily tell the tale but it sure looks nice compared to the rock and mud filled ones we've been doing so far So the portage trail was super easy, but uh, and we did it without stopping. It took us 20 minutes to do the 1200, but the mosquitoes were unbelievable. Like this trip, there's been a lot of bugs, uh, but mostly, honestly, it's been the deer flies more than anything. But that portage was crazy. The whole forest was humming with mosquitoes. I know we're only going that far, but. So we just got to our 10th portage of the day. It's, uh, I can't remember, 185 or something like that. But leading up to it, the water's really, really low. We basically had to wade the, the canoe through, take the bags out and just slide it over rocks and stuff. Uh, made for this section to be a little longer than we expected. Officially caught up with our trip schedule. This is where we were supposed to sleep. Really? Yeah, coming into Big Crow Lake. Ah, that's a big ass dragonfly. So even though we're on Big Crow Lake, which is the lake that we've reserved for tonight, uh, we had to do the whole length of the lake all the way around because the entire, we wanted something on the east side so there'd be a little sun in the afternoon and that's the, was receiving the wind. Every site was taken. Um, so we ended up having to go to the west side campsites. So we have this dark dungeon, it was mosquito filled. So Mike went to work. Uh, making the big blaze there and it really has helped there's a lot less bugs but uh anyway, it's a crappy little dark mosquito filled campsite got the bug shelter set up there my hammock's there mike's gonna be behind uh, the fire pit over there so it actually got really cold last night which i love because just made sleeping in the hammock that much better. Um, but first light this morning, probably around 5.30, somewhere around there. Heard a huge splash that woke me up and uh, was able, just from the uh, 
edge of my hammock to peek out and watch there's a moose that walked across right by our canoe here and just walked across our entire campsite. It's pretty cool. 4K, day 5? 4 or 5, yeah. Day 4 or 5. Fucking mosquitoes. So here's oh, and I trip. Nice. <laughs> Alright. My little video. This campsite sucks. <laughs> Fucking bugs everywhere. Unless you have fire. Lots of fire. So this is the 3,750 meter between Big, Tra uh, Big Crow and Hogan. We've done this portage before, um, about four years ago, and it kicked our ass. It's a, it's really brutal. Basically, it's just, it's long, but there's two constant elevations. It's just this constant slight uphill that goes on forever until it finally just drops all the way back down to the water on the Hogan side. Uh, four years ago, our gear was a lot heavier. Uh, we're gonna see if it makes, and we were double carrying. Uh, we'll see how it goes this year. So we got some bad news. Uh, some rangers caught up with us. Apparently they were looking for us last night, um, but we came in late to our lake, so they were looking for us before we arrived. Uh, Mike's got a family emergency at home and uh, we gotta leave basically as soon as possible. So they're actually gonna send, uh, they caught up with us right as we were heading down the portage. It was actually really good timing. So they're gonna send a float plane and it's gonna fly, cause right now we're, uh, there's no way to get to Cedar without two more days of travel. So they're gonna send a float plane and uh, fly us to Cedar. We'll get in the truck and uh, as soon as we get in cell phone range, we'll find out what's happening and drive back to Montreal. <laughs> Que le, le quai euh, à Cedar Lake, là? Ouais, c'est ça, le, 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 la place standard, là. Le... Où il y a le quai, c'est ça. Ouais, ok, il y a un quai, je sais pas si ça se passe. Je sais qu'il y a plusieurs quais, là, mais il y a un quai que nous autres on voit tout le temps. J'imagine que c'est celle-là qui ont dit de, de vous ramasser, là, où qu'il y a un genre de beach sur le côté. Ok, non, mais c'est notre camion qui nous attend. Je veux dire, on est parké à Cedar Lake. Ok, ok, c'est bon. Euh, tu veux qu'on dégage? Ouais, je vais mettre tout le canon, plus glacé. Euh, dans le dernier des sièges qui est disponible. Fais juste attendre. Je vais vous demander d'enlever vos vestes avant okay. de, okay. de vous asseoir, vous attacher. Pas de problème. Je vais les mettre en arrière du net.